Hey YouTube, Assalamu Alaikum and welcome to my channel which is all about the religion of Islam from a revert's perspective. By the end of this video you will understand and be able to explain the five core pillars of Islam. This is the first video in a new series called A Beginner's Guide to Islam which is intended for new converts or people interested in the religion. I will be covering the very basics of the beliefs as well as advice that I can offer from my own experience over the last 10 years on topics such as family, social and workplace challenges, seeking knowledge and even relationship and marriage advice. Islam offers guidance on all areas of life and because of this you may need to make some significant changes to your lifestyle and ideology especially if you're coming from a western background. If you need advice and guidance on the multitude of life changes and challenges that you may face on this journey then this is the right series for you. And lastly please make sure to like and subscribe if you find this video useful. Now here are some definitions that you will need to know before we begin. Number one is Qur'an. This is the book of Islam revealed to the final prophet and messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a guidance for mankind. Number two is Sunnah, which means the words, actions or way of the prophet. Number three is Hadith, which means sayings of the prophet. Number four is Farud or Wajib, which means obligatory. Number five is Halal, which means permitted. And finally, number six is Haram, which means not permitted. The five core pillars of Islam are the fundamental beliefs and practices of the religion that are required from every man or woman who identifies himself as a Muslim. And the information that we discussed will be taken from the Quran and Sunnah. Islam is both belief and laws in which Almighty God and His Prophet have told us what is halal and what is haram. Morals and acts of worship as well as the duties and rights of human beings. When Allah completed this religion, He chose it to be the way of life for all mankind until the Day of Judgment. Let's listen to a verse from the Quran explaining this. Now the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him has explained to us in the following hadith. Islam is built on five pillars. Number one, the testimony that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Number two is establishing regular prayer. Number three is giving charity. Number four is the pilgrimage to Mecca known as Hajj. And number five is fasting during the month of Ramadan. Now before we begin to discuss the five pillars of Islam, I want to explain that when it comes to worship in the religion, there are voluntary slash encouraged acts of worship as well as obligatory acts of worship. In this video, we are only going to focus on the obligatory acts of worship and the reasons for this are explained in the following hadith. A man questioned the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him and said, Do you think that if I perform the obligatory prayers, fast in Ramadan, treat as lawful that which is halal and treat as forbidden that which is haram and do not increase upon that in any voluntary good deeds, then I shall enter paradise. He peace be upon him replied, yes. In this hadith, the Prophet peace be upon him did not mention any of the voluntary acts indicating that it is permissible to leave them. The Prophet did not mention the voluntary acts to the man to make the religion easy for him, especially since he had recently accepted Islam and he wanted to prevent the man from believing that these acts were obligatory. Now we can understand from this that as new Muslims we do not need to overwhelm ourselves with too much information or actions. Firstly gain the Islamic core foundation and then as we grow closer to Allah and increase in faith, we will then have the desire and the ability to perform the voluntary acts alongside the obligatory ones. Now we need to discuss what the man means in this hadith. The man is saying that he will pray but only the obligatory prayers. He will only give mandatory charity, he will only fast during Ramadan and he will make Hajj once. And it is in these actions that he will neither increase nor decrease. The man does not mean that he will backbite, oppress people and continue sinning whilst only performing these minimum actions. He is still obligated to behave properly, fulfill his responsibilities and keep away from sinning. We are now going to listen to two verses from the Quran which I believe relate to this topic. <laughs> The 
These verses are referencing those who permit what Allah has made lawful and forbid that which Allah has made unlawful. In addition, these individuals do not try to change the meaning or context of the Hadith or Quranic verses for any personal reasons. They accept Islam as it has been stated by Allah wholeheartedly. It is important however to acknowledge that we all have our own personal desires or inclinations towards certain wrong actions. As long as we struggle against ourselves and refrain from trying to change the meaning of the Quran and the Sunnah to justify our own wrong actions, then it is a personal struggle. So we're now going to move on to the five pillars of Islam that we discussed earlier. This is going to be a general overview and I will be discussing each topic in depth in later videos. The first pillar of Islam is the testimony of faith called the Shahada. The Shahada is stating that you believe that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is the final messenger of Allah. By stating this, you are declaring your belief that Allah alone is the Lord of all things. He is the sustainer, controller, creator and provider. Believing that Allah alone is the only God and there is none that has the right or is worthy of worship besides Allah. As it says in the Quran, By stating the Shahada, you are also declaring that you believe that Allah sent his final messenger Muhammad and revealed to him the Quran and commanded him to convey this religion to all of mankind. The next video in this series will be discussing the Shahada in greater detail. So please subscribe and hit the bell notification so you will be notified as soon as the video is released. For those who can't wait and need information on this now, I have provided a link in the description to a video series on this topic. The second pillar of Islam is prayer, which is called Salah. As Muslims, we believe that Allah has enjoined upon every sane adult Muslim five prayers each day, which he does in a state of purity and humility, standing before his Lord, thanking him for his blessings and asking for his bounty, seeking forgiveness for his sins and asking him for paradise, as well as seeking refuge in him from the hellfire. Here are the five obligatory prayers that are required to be prayed each day. Fajr, early morning before dawn. Duhr, midday, just afternoon. Asr, mid-afternoon. Maghrib, just after sunset. And Isha, at night, after dark has fallen. The prayer represents a sincere turning towards Allah alone in all one's affairs. Allah has commanded all of the believers to strictly guard the observance of the prayers as he says in the Quran, <laughs> The five daily prayers are obligatory upon every Muslim. Some of the major scholars within the religion have stated that the one who abandons the prayer or deliberately neglects the prayer is no longer considered to be a Muslim and the reasons for this are as follows. Now Allah has prescribed coming together for these prayers in order to attain higher reward. The Prophet peace be upon him said, prayer offered in congregation is 27 times better than prayer offered alone. Prayer in the mosque is a means of entering paradise and the Prophet said, whoever comes and goes to the mosque, Allah will prepare a house in paradise for each time he comes and goes. The prayer was the delight of the Prophet. Whenever Amasa grieved him, he would turn to prayer and converse with his Lord calling upon him, seeking his forgiveness, guidance, and asking him for his bounty. Prayer done with proper humility and respect for Allah brings the Muslim closer to his Lord and keeps him away from doing evil actions. Allah 
الفحشاء والمنكر ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون. Now I will be making a video later on in the series describing and explaining exactly how to do the prayer. However, if you cannot wait for this, then I provided another link in the description with information for you on this. The third pillar of Islam is the mandatory charity known as Zakat. Just as Allah has created people with different attitudes, colors, and levels of knowledge, He has also made some of us rich and some poor. To test the rich as to whether they will show gratitude, and to test the poor as to whether they will be patient. Allah says in the Quran, Zakah is a means to purify and cleanse wealth as well as purify the soul from stinginess and miserliness. It strengthens the love between the rich and the poor, takes away hatred, makes security prevail and brings happiness to the community. Allah has made the payment of zakat obligatory to anyone who owns the minimum amount for one year. The fourth pillar of Islam is fasting in the month of Ramadan. Fasting means to abstain from things which will break your fast, such as eating, drinking and sexual intercourse. From the break of true dawn until sunset with the intention of fasting. In the month of Ramadan, we fast in order to grow closer to Allah, to avoid that which He has forbidden, and to get used to being patient, to bring our own desires under control and allow us to have compassion for those less fortunate. Allah says in the Quran, <laughs> This is also the great month in which Allah revealed the Qur'an. The reward for good deeds, acts of worship and charity are multiplied in this month. The gates of heaven are opened and the gates of hell are shut. Allah made fasting the month of Ramadan obligatory on every sane adult Muslim. As it says in the Qur'an, Now there is a great reward with Allah for fasting. The Prophet peace be upon him said, Every action of the son of Adam is multiplied, each good deed receiving tenfold to seven hundredfold reward. Allah said, except for fasting, for it is done for me and I will give reward for it, for he who gives up his desires for my sake. Now the fifth and final pillar of Islam is the pilgrimage to Mecca known as Hajj. Allah has given the Muslims a direction of prayer known as the Qibla, which they face when they offer Salah. The Qibla is the ancient house of the Kaaba in Mecca. Now 
وَإِنَّ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ لَيَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّهُ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَمَا اللَّهُ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا يَعْمَلُونَ Allah has made it obligatory for every sane adult Muslim who has the means to visit the ancient house and perform the rituals of Hajj, as Allah explains in the Quran. وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ So those are the five co-pairs of Islam. Now if you're at this point in the video and you're beginning to feel overwhelmed or confused, don't worry. I can relate to you and I understand how these new concepts can be overwhelming. But have patience and be persistent, don't give up. We all have a long journey ahead of us. And seeking knowledge is a big part of Islam. So let's start with the basics and then move forward from there. With that being said, I would encourage you to watch the next video in this series about taking your shahada, the testimony of faith and becoming a Muslim. I will also be adding a playlist within this series to allow you to skip forward to any particular topic that you're looking for. If you have any questions for me, that is the reason that I made this channel. You can feel free to leave a comment down below or you can email me. I've left my email in the description box. If you enjoyed this video and you feel that this series will be beneficial for the Ummah, please leave a like and comment down below to let me know. Subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next video. Assalamu alaikum.